Tony, you had something? to say travels for all those that are traveling. Mm. We praise God. If there are no other requests, we praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's love the Lord tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Glory, 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 God. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we just want to love you for a few minutes tonight. Hallelujah, God. We want to just appreciate you for being our God. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, God. Thank you, Lord, for just presenting yourself to us, Lord. Hallelujah, all the benefits of true holiness and salvation. Hallelujah, God. How we seek the Lord. Hallelujah, God. And he's right there. Hallelujah, to console and direct us. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we thank you for righteousness tonight. Hallelujah, God. We thank you for faith tonight, God. God, we thank you for giving us the patience to endure whatever our assignment and even the trials and tribulations that you allow us to go through, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We understand that if we stand on the word of God, hallelujah, Lord, we shall come out. Glory, God. That's pure gold, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. God, we thank you for the sacrifice, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You are the true sacrifice. And because of your life, Lord, we understand what our purpose really is. Glory, 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 God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God, touch those that are trying to make it here tonight. Cover and protect them, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, touch those that are watching. Just tuning in, Lord. Hallelujah. Meet them right where they are, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God. Those that are traveling, God. Hallelujah, God. Cover and protect. We speak traveling mercies over their lives, Lord. God, for the more family, Lord. Touch, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Do it, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Complete every work, God. In the name of Jesus. God, in the name of Jesus. For Malachi, Aaliyah, and Curtis, Lord. Touch their bodies. Touch their mind. Hallelujah, Lord. Touch the entire family. Touch Sister Shona's body, Lord. Heal, Lord. We bind pain in the name of Jesus. Pain come under subjection. I speak comfort, Lord. I speak peace, God, to her body, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, for the Carter family, healing in the name of Jesus. Comfort in the name of Jesus, Lord. God, we touch and agree, Lord, as in touching with Sister Frances for our entire family. God, you know what their needs are, one by one, Lord. Hallelujah, God, do a sweep of God in the name of Jesus. Glory, God, in the name of Jesus, God, we pray and believe. Glory, God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Jesus. We're going to stand on the word, and we're going to stand until God say it's over. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, Lord. Glory, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hallelujah, Jesus.
praise the Lord. Any testimonies? Thank you, Jesus. Sister Francis. Trying to get a second job. Okay, and I got it. Well, praise the God. devil was so busy. I went to try to get some new ID, up to date ID, because I had to have it for this job. And um, I bought everything I had because I wasn't able to get in my mailbox. And so I took like my leads, birth certificate, social security card, everything I could think of. And they still wouldn't accept none of that. So I'm like, well, what am I going to do? Waiting on call the office, waiting on him to, uh, you know, come over my mailbox. And so the next week, I'm calling and calling, wouldn't nobody answer the phone all week long. Mm. I'm like, boy, I was like, the devil is just really pushing me, you know. So then our family uh, got into it. Thank God to Brother Edwards. And um, got my mail out because that's what I needed a letter with my name and address on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and then after that happened, um, I called to pay my light bill. And they gonna try to say my light bill was like $480. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's not right, you know. They was like, well, ma'am, that's what it reads. So I'm like, no, they was uh -huh. like, well, uh, you adding on the cut on those drugs? I said, no. I said, when I moved out my last apartment, I had credit. Mm -hmm. on my flight bill. So I said, it shouldn't be that much, you know? So they was like, well, let me look and see. And so the lady just took part in her heart. She said, you know what? She said, I'm just gonna dismiss all of this. Just give me $700 and you'll be good. Hallelujah. I was like, thank God for that. Amen. So, yeah, you know, I just thank God. Mm -hmm. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else? Well, praise God. Bishop. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Well, tonight I want to share something with you that I call the Christian Olympics. The Christian Olympics. You know, uh, if you've been watching TV or whatever, or just up on the sports, the Olympic trials, the world's Olympic trials are going on right now. Athletes are trying out, testing their abilities against other athletes to qualify for the Olympic Games, uh, specifically running race and track and field in Tokyo. We want to talk about Christian Olympics. What would it be like if we were in the Olympics? I, I want to begin in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 23 to 27. It says, And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that you may obtain. And every man that striveth for the master is tempered in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore run, I therefore so run, not as uncertain, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castor. Praise the Lord. So uh, if you read in 1 Corinthians in chapter 9, the rest of in the remainder of the chapter, of the chapter Paul kind of illustrates his general sentiment for how he is focused uh, his living. This is how I'm living. And that's what he's talking about. The duty and practice of self-denial. And he's doing this for the salvation of others. He refers to the well-known games uh, that are celebrated and held near Corinth. So these people understand what he's talking about. He uses something that's very close to them or something that they would be aware of. Like I pointed out to you right now, the uh, 
trials, the world will remember the trials are going through. But anyway, throughout the chapter, uh, his object is to show that in, the de uh, uh, in uh, declining to receive support for his preaching, uh, that he had done that. He was he was subjecting himself. He was he was self denial. He was in self denial. Not because he thought that he had no claim to it, but because by doing it, he could he could better advance salvation of the people. Uh, he also believed that the furtherance of the gospel he could advance, and in his special case, he could obtain uh, better evidence. In other words, uh, or furnish to others better evidence that he was motivated and moved by by uh, uh, the minister by a sincere desire to honor God. Uh, I'm not doing this for money. I'm not doing this to try to get rich. And so he was he, he denied himself certain things uh, for that purpose. Uh, he voluntarily submitted to, to, to lack in many instances. Uh, he had had a great uh, object in view of doing so. In other words, I have a goal in mind. There's a reason why I'm doing so, so uh, that's what he says. He, he says uh, uh, these well-known athletic games at Corinth, the same thing was done by the races there. He, he explains this. He said, every man that strives for the master is temperate in all things. Uh, you know, wrestlers and boxers or whatever. He says, therefore, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, uh, so fight I, not as one that beats the air. In other words, when he's talking about beating the air, you know, it's like he's shadow boxing. He's just punching into the air. So, so he's describing a situation where this is what I do. In other words, he's in the Christian level. He's doing like, uh, you know, like they do when they're training for athletic endeavor. Uh, if, if athletes do it for objects that comparatively are unimportant, in other words, uh, what they're attaining some earthly prize. Surely it was proper for him to do it so he could obtain a, a prize or a crown that should never fade. That, that's what he, he, he's thinking. And uh, this is one of the most beautiful, appropriate, vigorous, uh, and bold illustrations that can be found and that can be compared by reference to the conduct of us and our, how we conduct the affairs of our life. He's taking what, what, what athletes do to prepare for athletic endeavors and, and what they're doing. They, they want to win a crown. They, they want to win a prize. Everyone that, that, that's going for the mastery, they're tempered in all things. In other words, they're doing certain things to make sure that they're able to win their race. This is what they're about. And, and he says, he says they, 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 these people, uh, uh, they were, everybody that runs, not going to receive a prize. They all run, but only one gets the prize. Praise the Lord. Uh, uh, now, now, when he goes and he compares this to us, uh, uh, how we live our lives, he, he motivates or he tries to incite us to this as a duty because that's where he lays it out. In other words, he says, so run that you may obtain. In other words, you want to run. Don't just get out there and just lollygagging around. You want to run like you're trying to win. In fact, uh, Camille has a story where uh, she, had, she and a friend of ours who lived in New Orleans, uh, Lillian Ingersoll, they were, they were running in a marathon race or something. And, you know, uh, they, just to be able to finish the marathon would be a grand achievement for them. Well, well, Camille was, you know, she was running, boy, and she was getting to do it almost to the end. And she was striving to get as far as she can. Now, she wasn't going to come in first, but she wasn't going to be last. And, and her friend, a friend Lillian said, Camille, she started yelling for her, Camille, Camille. So Camille thought something was wrong. So she stopped, went back to her. She said, girl, come run with me. Camille said, oh, man, you got me coming. I'm running like I'm trying to win the race. You just lollygagging around. You understand? Honda et Well, What Paul says, you have to run so that you may obtain. You're not just out here playing the game. It's not just a play thing. You're not just saying, well, at least I'm saved. I'm better than I used to be. 
That's not why you're in the race. Praise the Lord. He said you want to run so that you can obtain. So, you know, uh, uh, it, 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 it's different for Christians that in your race, in their race, only one wins the prize with them. But you can all run so that you can obtain. Is what he says. We all are running to obtain. Not just one person will get the prize in our race. This is the Christian race. It's different from the regular Olympics. Regular Olympics, you know, the carnal, you got you, you can get either gold, silver, or bronze. After that, you out. I had a friend that that was a, a, a bronze in the 1972 Olympics, I think. He won a bronze uh, medal for the 220-yard uh, run. You know, he and I were good friends. Played football for the Saints. He played football for San Diego Chargers. Uh, he was amazed that with his athletic ability and prowess, he couldn't beat me at racquetball. He didn't understand how that was possible, you know. But anyway, he, he you know he was a bronze medal winner, you know what I mean, in the Olympics and that sort of thing. I, I thought that was amazing, but but that was the last prize you could get. Everybody else behind they got nothing. See, in our Olympics, in the Christian Olympics, you can run. Everybody who runs and finishes the race can receive a reward. And, and that's what we're running for. We're running so that we may obtain. See, uh, uh, the Bible tells you this. Our walk in Christ is often referred to as running. As running. Uh, if you look at Philippians chapter 2, verses 14 through 16, it says, Do all things without murmurings and disputes that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. In other words, Paul said, I'm hoping that you all will do this thing right, so that so that you you will be you 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 you'll be even though you're in the, in the midst of a, a perverse and, and crooked nation that you shine like lights that when the day of Christ comes I, boy I can look at you and say I didn't run in vain you made it you did something but he's calling it a run a run that his, his, his endeavors the thing that he's doing is he's running he's running or uh, uh, it's either referred to as running or, or seeking a prize or seeking a prize in Philippians chapter 3 14 and 15 Paul said I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of, of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. In other words, you ought to be like this too. And if in anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. So, so, so again, we're, we're calling this our Christian Olympics, and, and, and we're saying, uh, as the scripture says in 1 Corinthians uh, 9, he says, look, uh, 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 everybody that's in the race, you run. Everybody runs in a race. But only one person receives the prize. But 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 so you need to run so that you you come you're trying to obtain. You need to run so that you could obtain. You want the prize. Not but but he goes on and he says that uh, uh, everybody that strives for mastery. If you're trying to be a master at something, then you're temperate in all things, and they're doing it. Uh, uh, people in the natural, you're doing it for a corruptible crown. But ours is incorruptible. Praise the Lord. Uh, uh, you have great encouragement to persist constantly and diligently and vigorously in your course. He, he, that, that's what he's trying to, trying to encourage you. There's room for all to get the prize. You cannot fail if you run well. If you run well, you, you can't fail. Galatians chapter 2 and 2 says, And I, I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. So again, Paul's uh, concern is that I, I don't want to have to run in vain. What I'm doing, I'm considering this a run, as though I'm in a race, and though I'm trying to run to obtain a prize. And he says this, I, I, I'm using... Uh, attack. I'm using things. I'm running well, in other words. I, I'm not just doing anything. 
I'm making sure that when I when I present this gospel and communicate to these people and those people that are of reputation, if they think they're about something, if they're proud, I'm going to do it privately with them because I don't want to have to have done all this in vain. I don't want to have to run in vain. You, you know, whenever you whenever you witness, especially if you witness into a group of people, you're sharing the gospel with a group of people. And, and, and I learned this when we were in New Orleans because we used to have debates. You know, our little Bible study group, Sometimes we would get invited somewhere. Uh, oftentimes a person would come, somebody would invite somebody from their job or whatever, and they would come and, and sit through the Bible study. And, and the first thing that they would do is run back to, or go back to uh, uh, the last thing that they heard that was religious. Or, and they would go to, these, and these people would say, well, look, well, we, we think, we believe this. And uh, at least on two occasions, we went out, uh, our little group went together, we parked in the cars and we drove to wherever that we were supposed to be meeting the folks and we had a debate with them on this. Well, well I learned something then, that the person who is the leader of that group is not going to give in. They're not, because they don't want to be outshined in front of all the people that follow and believe in them. So you, you'd have to be like, Paul, if you wanted to win them, you'd have to talk to them privately. You'd have to talk to them privately. You understand? But, you know, when you're in that situation, we do it anyway, because seeds are falling on all those that are hearing it. And they may come back later. You may run into them another time. And they say, well, tell me a little bit more about that while I'm not with the person that is our leader. You know, like that. But, but Paul, he, he says, look, uh, uh, the, the, the point is this. If you run well, you, you are not going to fail. You can't fail. Praise the Lord. Galatians 5 and 7, again, he refers to it as a run. He tells the people at Galatia, he said, you did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? In other words, you were in a run. You were in a race. You were in a Christian Olympics. You were running well. What happened? What hindered you? What stopped you? You were going well. You were doing well. Y'all got a church here. Y'all born again, full of the Holy Ghost, everything like that. You've been baptized appropriately in the name of Jesus now. And we're teaching you everything you once believed that, boy, it was by grace of God and we're marching on now. You're telling me that we have to do this and people have to be circumcised and all this kind of stuff. What, what happened to you? That's what he wants to know. How did you get hindered in your run? What, did somebody throw a log in the road or in the track when you were running? What happened? Did somebody trip you? You understand? If you saw the, the Tour de France, somebody had a sign and they hit one of the riders and they had a whole pile of people stacked up, just bike after bike, tumbling over one another. What happened? What happened? You were running well. Praise the Lord. But, but Paul, in, in, in the passage that he, we read, he directs us in our course by setting more fully to view his own example. He's still carrying the illusion of this race thing. He said those that race in the games were kept to a certain diet. You see, every man that strives for the mastery is tempered in all things. The fighters and the wrestlers uh, uh, in, in your exercise are kept to strict diets and discipline. They can't just do anything. They keep themselves to it. You, you know, like um, if, if you're, if you're uh, uh, on a track team, football team, any kind of sports or athletic thing, and you're endeavoring to do well, well, there's certain things that you start doing. You, you start, you eat a certain way. I had a young man uh, uh, at Boys Town. He was on the tennis team, and boy, he was very—he was a very good tennis player, very good tennis player. In fact, he could beat the coach. You know, I had to go out and practice with him, or he couldn't get real practice. So I would go out and hit with him. Little so guy from Africa, Ernie Bormawat, and boy, I'd go out and hit with him and everything. And and consequently, uh, 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 when the when the, when the tournament came up, we had to go to Lincoln to play in the, in the tournament, the whatever the, the tennis thing was, match against other teams. And what have you? And the coach, you know, uh, his his gift to me for doing all that was, you can come with us to the tournament. And you know, I, okay, yes, I'll come. To it. I played like it was a happy thing for me. I didn't want to have to get up at six in the morning, drive to Lincoln to watch these boys play tennis. And but one of them could really hit, you know what I mean? But anyway, I went with them. Well, on the second occasion, uh, uh, the second day we went out there, uh, uh, Ernie was playing. And he's our only hope for any kind of recognition at all. And he gets a cramp. He starts cramping up. Here's why he started cramping up. You know, after the tennis uh, match or tournament the first day, 
well, we went out, you know, we got pizza and all this kind of stuff. We just have eaten everything like that. Well, the next morning, Ernie got up and ate some cold pizza and a glass of orange juice. And when he got out there and started playing in that sun, he started cramping up. What happened was, Ernie, you weren't temperate. You, 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 didn't, you, didn't, you didn't follow a correct diet. There were things that you didn't do properly to prepare for your race, for your trying, for the thing that you were doing. You, you, you didn't do it right. And we had to go, you know, we took a break. We went over to uh, UNL and we went, you know, that, it was at, at UNL, but we went over to the building where we could find the coach and ask the coach, what should we do? And the coach said, well, you just got to drink some water or whatever, like that. Not a whole lot you could do. And he went and tried to play the rest of it but it didn't turn out well for him because you, you, you weren't temperate. You, you, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't follow the correct uh, kind of discipline that you would have needed to if you wanted to win in the game. Oh, praise the Lord. But, but, but that's why Paul tells us this. He gives us this, 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 this idea, and, and he tells us how these people are temperate. And every man that wants to, if you're striving for the mastery, if you want to win, if you want to be a master at it, uh, uh, if you want to elevate yourself to the top, you understand, like the fighters and the wrestlers uh, uh, in your exercise are kept to a strict diet and discipline, you have to keep yourself that way too. And, and uh, um, they don't uh, uh, indulge in themselves. Come on, Spain. <laughs> no, you're in a race. You're running. You're competing with something. You, 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 you're trying to strive for mastery. So, so there's certain things that you're going to have to have to give up. Certain things that you're going to have to not indulge in. You're going to have to restrain yourself from, uh, you know, like they did. They restrained themselves with the food that they ate and some of the other liberties they used on the on, on other occasions. And you know what those liberties are. You know, certain things you don't do if you're trying to be like temperate. This word temperate in, in, in this passage of scripture means to exercise self restraint in diet and chastity. Not tonight, honey. I, I got to race tomorrow. You, there's, there's certain things that you have certain liberties that, that you know, they're okay, you could do that, but if you're trying to win the race, then you're restraining yourself. Shouldn't you be willing to exercise restraint from your liberty? Oh, a gentleman asked me this uh, when I was working at Boys Time one time. He said, he said man, yeah, you're a pastor. He said, well, uh, y'all can't do this, y'all can't do this. I said, I'm doing, I can do anything I want to. There is no I can't. I can do anything that I want to. I have liberty. I'm free. There's certain things I don't want to do. Certain things would offend God. Certain things would not be good for me as an example to other people. See, Paul restrained himself. You're doing this for other people. You, there's a whole lot of stuff you could have done and you could have been okay. But you're restraining yourself because you want to show people, no, this is what it's like. This, why, this is why we haven't bought the house next door or built up on top of this and had me an office with glass walls in it and all that kind of stuff like that. Because God told me you don't need that. Oh, you can afford that. This building paid for it. You can build another one. Just like the other one. You can add on to it, do whatever you want to. But why you need that? Your office is driving around your car and your telephone. You're communicating with an international ministry through your phone. You talk to them every day. Every day, every night. Office for what? What you gonna do in the office? It's a show. You know, I mean, I don't have anything against offices. If you like offices, that's good, you know what I'm saying? But you know, I, my office, my office cost me Five dollars and seventy-five cents, sixty-seven cents, or something a day. It's called scooters. As long as I buy a coffee, I can sit there for hours and talk, meet with people, do whatever. Here's my office, baby. I mean, you could do that. That's a liberty you could have. But why? See, Paul did, I, no, I'm restraining myself. I'm keeping myself from doing certain things. I'm going without. I'm having certain lack for the sake of others, not me. Let, 
look, you know this, you know this. Uh -uh. If a person is sold on a goal and they believe in a philosophy, it becomes mind over matter. A person do anything, they'll hold back their thing. You know, it's like a, it's like a, a diet, a workout plan. That's how some people can, can, can diet, uh, uh, follow a diet or a workout plan without fail. And some folks can't. I can't I'm not doing it. And, and it all depends on what the end goal means to you. You know, like, like uh, I, I used to train for, and I, I had a very strict diet. I don't know if it was strict because I ate a lot of different foods, but they were extremely low fat, less than 10% fat in my entire diet. And I worked out five times a week for about an hour and a half in the gym. You know, and if I was training someone for competition, we do two a day, three on one off, three on one off, like that. And if I was training somebody for a competition, I would eat like I told them they had to eat. This is what you have to do. Let me show you how they go. You, you got to do it like this. I had one gentleman, you know, he was a young man. It was, I was like 40 something, 40, 42, something like that. And he was 20 something. I'm always working out with people 20 years younger than me. I don't know why that is. But any, anyway. Uh, 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 what, I'm training him for a competition, and he decides he's going to confess to me one day. And that's when I quit. Because he wasn't paying me, you know. You just want to hang around me because you want to know how could a man 20 years old and you look like this. So he told me uh, one day, he said, oh, man, I messed up. He first started off telling me, you know, when you when you separate and age, you know, sometimes a little yoke will fall in there, and you just throw the whole yoke in there. I said, no, I don't ever do that. <laughs> No, I did. I told him I take a spoon. I take a spoon and take that little bit of yolk out. Cause my goal is to have no fat. And, and, and then one day he told me, he said, he said, Oh man, I messed up. <laughs> he said, he said, I had I had some ice cream. He had a bowl of ice cream, and his girlfriend was a woman that was a year older than me. She was 43 years old or something like that. You understand? You 21 got a 43. She, she said, one bowl? Yeah, she, she busted him out. You ate more than one bowl of ice cream. You understand? Like that. And I stood there and I said to him, okay, for, for one thing, you train for a competition, so you're done with sugar. You're done with uh, overextent, you know, a lot of fluids and stuff like no salt and all that. You don't want any water held in. You know, you want to have a big rip looking and stuff like that. You, you, you're three weeks out from competition, you eat an ice cream. Let's say that you wanted to cheat. There's fat-free yogurt, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's like ice cream. And you ate ice cream? You know what I mean? You went to the extreme. Right, right. You went way off the track. So, so I, I realized this, that the, the end goal didn't mean enough to you. See, and when, when, when look, after a while, you know, I stopped working out and everything else, started back working out. And, and stuff like this. Well, by this time, we got date night and all that kind of stuff in, in play. You understand? So I can't be as strict as I want to be. You understand? Because you go in a restaurant, you can't tell them, well, gee, I don't want any oil in that. I want it to be like this. I want it to be like this. I have to go back there and cook it for myself. You know what I mean? Like that. No, I like that, but you, you messed it up because you, you fried it, you know? Uh, uh, but, 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 but what happens is this. When I decided, I had to decide, well, I'm not going to be that strict. I'm not going to look like that. I'm not going to be like that anymore because it doesn't mean that much to me. The end goal is not that important to me now. I, that's not what I'm trying to be anymore. So I don't have to be like that. But if I did, I know how to do that. I could cut it out. I could do this. I could do that. I could be on a competition diet for six weeks at a time. I quit using salt, no sugar. Not even fat-free snacks. I'm done. Like that. But the goal has to mean something. It all depends on what, what the end goal means to you. And that's why Paul said, here's what's happening. These people are doing this for a carnal, some kind of prize, a ring of leaves or something around their head, or a certificate, or even a trophy, whatever it might be made of, and, and that sort of thing. But you're doing this for something that will never, ever corrupt. Nothing, never corrupt. We're talking about your life, your soul, your eternal life. And if they can do it for that, why can't you do it for this? Praise the Lord. Hebrews 12 and 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we also accomplished about 
with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. You in the Christian Olympics, you're running a race. You're striving for a prize. See, uh, the racers in these games, if you notice, they ran with uncertainty. He, he said, I don't run like uncertain, with uncert uh, uncertainty. But all run, but one receives a prize. Those racers are uncertain whether uh, uh, they will win or not. I don't know if I'm going to win. They had no clue. They, they just know that I'm out competing with other racers. But the Christian racer is at no uncertainty. Everyone may run here so as to obtain. But you have to run within the lines. You have, to, you have to keep in the path of the duty that's prescribed to you. In other words, you have to run the race according to the rules. But you can win. Everybody who won can get the prize. All you have to do is make sure that you're running you know, you can't just cut across the track and go to the end line. You have to stay within the line. Now, if God has some prescribed things for our race, we have to stay within them. Oh, no, you can win. Everybody that runs, everybody that runs, everybody in the race can win. If you're in the Christian Olympics, all you have to do is finish the race and you win. You get a prize. Praise the Lord. And then there's a note. Uh, uh, for, for those that are teachers and preachers and ministers of the people, uh, 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 salvation, you, you can miss it. Preacher of salvation can miss it. And uh, you, you may show others the way to heaven and never get there yourself. And, and to prevent this, this is what Paul said. He said, I'm subduing and keeping my body under. Uh, all my bodily inclination you know, but because I don't want myself to preach to others and then I, I, I become a castaway or I miss the crown. I'll be disapproved and rejected by the judge himself, by the sovereign judge. In fact, uh, uh, God gave me a thought like that the other night, uh, one night, uh, a week ago or so, and, and I, I sent this out in my little message that I send out each night. This is one of the messages that I sent out. And it started off with Second Peter 2, 20 through 22. It says, for if, the, if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and the Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. And then my comment is this, uh, is it far-fetched to think that those who are called might backslide or even completely fall away? The answer is no. I know of several that uh, uh, fall into each category. Some who knew the truth and how to live it, but slid back into relying on flesh and not holding the truth without wavering. And sadly, I know some who have completely left the life, no longer even pretending to live a saved life. James 3 and 1 says, uh, uh, we will receive a greater judgment. Jesus taught, for unto whomever much is given, of him shall much uh, be, be much required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. We pray the same prayer for them as anyone else. Lord, restore them. And then we end it with Jeremiah 3 and 12. Go and proclaim these words toward the north and south. Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord. And I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you. For I am merciful, said the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Praise the Lord. Uh, uh, you know, when Paul was writing about this in Corinthians, he had this in mind. He wrote to the Galatians, to Philippians. In, in all of his writings, he, uh, many of his writings, most of them, he referred to what we do in our lives, this walk that we have with Christ, our attempts to make it uh, as a race, as running. It's something that we're doing. We're trying to achieve a goal. We're, we have a goal in mind. There's a, there's a, there's a, a crown. There's something that we want to get. And he compared it to uh, a, a race, running a race. And he often re 
quick as to run. Just run. I don't want to have to run in vain. You know, when you run, whatever what you did run well, what did stop you? Uh, uh, you need to run the race that's set before you, like that. And, and but the, the, the interesting enough in Corinthians, where he was most uh, descriptive of it, uh, was was uh, concerning the, the, the races or what would be like the Olympics of that day uh, in Corinth, or near Corinth. And, and uh, he, he explained it uh, very well. And, and he, he, he did very good comparison so that we could all understand and know uh, what it would be like. And he said that, uh, know you not that they would run the race, run all, but only one uh, receive the prize, so run that you may have so his, 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 what he's reflecting or what he's trying to get you to understand is that you need to run as though you're the only one that can get a prize. You need to run like you're trying to be the one who gets it. Even though everybody that runs can get it, he's saying, but you need to run like that. You, you know how they tell you uh, uh, that there's little cliches like that, dance like no one is looking. Because if somebody was looking, you know, you're like, you don't want to do all your moves, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> some of them might not be good moves. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it said dance like nobody's looking, you know, uh, sing like nobody's listening. Well, 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 he's telling you to run. And so you're the, you, you're the one, you're going to get the prize. You, you can only, uh, 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 are you going for that one prize that is uh, that can be received? That's how you should run. And, and then he says, if you're really striving for that, if you're really trying to do that, I want to compare you to people in the world also. They're temperate in all things. In other words, they have brought their lives to a situation. They have uh, willfully and, and, and uh, 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 by their own uh, volition brought themselves to an understanding and, and tempered their lives to something that would make sure that they ran the race to the end. I don't want anything to interfere. And, and uh, uh, he said, look, his demonstration is, I'm not, I, I'm not running uncertain. I'm not just running like I don't know what's going to happen. So I fight. And my fight is not like I'm shadow, but I'm not just boxing. I'm really in this. I'm not just beating the air. And to prove that, I keep myself, I keep my body under and bring it into subjection so that after I preach to other people, I, I don't lose out. In other words, I'm taking the advice I'm giving you, I'm showing you that I'm doing that myself. So that uh, uh, when he writes to, uh, uh, toward the end of his ministry, he writes to Timothy, a second letter to Timothy, in 2 Timothy 4, uh, 7, 8, he said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. In other words, no, you can all get there. You can all get there. I fought a good fight. Like I told you, I was boxing, but I wasn't just boxing or punching the air. I now finished the course. I was running, and I've completed the race. I kept the faith, and now I have a crown laid up for me. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get the reward uh, that I should have, that I should get. And I'm not the only one, but you can all receive this if you love the Lord and his appearance. Father, right now, in your precious name, Lord, would you help us to run the race? Lord, we're, 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 we've declared ourselves, we've gone through the trials, now that we've qualified for the Christian Olympics, Lord, we want to achieve the mastery. We're striving for the mastery, Lord. Help us, O oh God, to temper our lives, to be tempered in all things. No, there's some liberties. There's some things that we can have. But for the sake of others, for the sake of the salvation of others, for those that might look on and see us and say, uh, uh, what is that? Or is that God? Or is that how he's represented? Is that what Jesus is now? Is that what we're supposed to be doing? No, no, you know, I, I could do that, but I, I don't want to do that because I don't want you to look at me and get a misrepresentation of Christ. I, I don't want to somehow let the devil slip in and pull me out of the game. 
uh, that, that I trip over whatever he's thrown in my way. I, I don't want someone to come to me and say, oh, uh, pastor, you showed, you ran well. What did hinder you? How did you fall away from the truth? So, Lord, we're asking you to help us today. Hasha. Ando yarababosi. Ibu saka yarababasi. Lord, would you stir us up? Continue to motivate us, incite us, encourage us, O oh God, so that our race, our run, is not with uncertainty, Lord. We know, oh God, we're going to finish the race. We know, oh Lord, that we're going to complete the race. And Lord, for that, the promise is that we too can have a crown of righteousness laid up for us on that day. We thank you, oh God, for your power. We thank you, oh God, for your willingness to see us through. Thank you for your help, your encouragement. We thank you for reminding us, oh God, every time we start to fall short. We give you glory now. We lift your name on high, Lord. Bless the wonderful name of Jesus. In your precious name, Lord Jesus, we pray.